Welcome to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio hour and podcast. I'm your host, Life Coach Marina Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is Hillary Hendershot. Hillary is a wealth coach, and we are going to be talking today on the topic how to remove money blocks and have the income and wealth you deserve. So I know that most of you watching and listening, this is something that you are, should be acutely aware of and want to know of to, um, uh, to be sure that you don't have any of the money blocks that we're gonna be talking about. And so you can understand how to build your wealth. So welcome, Hillary. Thank you so much for having me, Myrna. I'm so excited. Yes, I'm excited to have you too. This is a topic that I don't get to talk about much on the show. So I'm going to be learning as much as the audience today okay, on, good. Uh, <laughs> on money blocks. So, all right. Excellent. So welcome. All right. So let me give you guys a little bit more information on Hillary. Hillary Hendershot, MBA CFP, is a mother, financial powerhouse, and everyday superhero. Woo! <laughs> With more than 21 years of experience helping women and couples preserve and grow their wealth while eliminating financial stress once and for all. Hillary will teach us today the link between a healthy relationship with money and a healthy life lifestyle. Hillary's powerful seven steps to wealth framework gives her clients actionable steps to create wealth and clear money blocks. Awesome. Yes, I am very interested in this topic. Um, so as a wealth coach, um, Hillary, I see from your bio, I didn't read it all, but that you were once 600000 in debt, and now you have a seven-figure network. Can you share with our listeners and those watching on YouTube um, your journey from debt to success? Yeah. I can. So I actually, my bachelor's degree is in economics and I used to tutor the math portion of the SAT. So you could say I have a head for numbers and <laughs> That's good. even though, and yet I found myself in my late twenties with uh, multiple, multiple tens of credit, thousands of credit card dollars of credit card debt. I had a, if I had $420,000 in mortgage debt on a condo that in San Jose, California went from $430,000 of appraised value to just $190,000 of appraised value. So I had, wow, that must be, is that the 2006, 2008 exactly. drop market? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. So I had massive uncollateralized debt. I had $72,000 in tuition debt. I, and I was the kind of person who would spend money before it came in. I was a massive overspender. And I noted, you know, when you, Marna, asked to book this interview, you said that you had recently heard the term money blocks for the first time and you, you yes. got interested in it. Yeah. Yes. I, I had not heard about money blocks at this time. However, <laughs> you know, and there was one day I pulled my leased BMW into the gas station and I put my credit card into the machine to get gas and my credit card was declined. And I tried another card, it's declined. Another card, it's declined. At that point, my credit cards are maxed out. No one will give me any more credit card room, right? And my bank accounts were empty. I had already emptied my 401k, my Roth IRA. I had like spent all this good money chasing after bad, trying to dig myself out of this hole because as my income was declining in 2008, um, so was my, my debt was increasing, right? And pretty soon... I was not able to keep up with my spending habit. So I literally couldn't even put a tank of gas in my beautiful convertible BMW that day. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so I'm walking That's home. That's an image, right? Oh, it was painful. I was humiliated, embarrassed, ashamed. I thought here, my parents worked so hard to get me an undergraduate degree with no debt and look what I've done with it, right? And I thought, wow, I'm really sort of like a drag on society today. This is not how my life was supposed to turn out. And so I'm talking to myself on the walk home and I said, okay, Hillary, you're smart, you have good intentions, you just have bad results. So what is the root of what's going on here? And I look around me at my friends and colleagues who have the same 
opportunity set in front of them and yet they're building wealth and I'm building debt. And I said, what's yeah. the difference? Yeah. What's the difference between me and them? Well, it's obviously behavior. So right. where I need to go to work is on my psychology. And that was intuitive to me when I really thought about it. So I decided to become an expert on money psychology. I really made a decision that day. I said, okay, I'm not willing to have a life like this. This just isn't how this is going to go for me. So I said, I'm going to become an expert on money psychology. So I started reading about neuroplasticity, the, 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 cha- the science of the changing of the brain. Right? It's intuitive mm-hmm. to you that your brain can change. So there's things that, for example, mindsets you had when you were younger that you don't feel that way about anymore or habits that you've adopted in order to be more successful or have a certain area of your life work better. And that you've engaged neuroplasticity to do that. And for some people, sometimes in some areas, we get to thinking that we're stuck with a certain mindset or way of thinking or being, and we're just not, but we can engage neuroplasticity to change our brain. And what I learned that the neuropsychologists already know is that our life, especially in some areas, is so much a function of linguistics, of the words that we use to describe things. Right, right. It's Mm -hmm. true. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so when I was young, my mom, and I wasn't privy to her savings habits as is her prerogative, but you know, she was a good saver on a medium income. And so there were lots of things she wouldn't buy. And so for me, because all I cared about was the brand name jeans and the shoes, right, 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 for me, there was never enough money. So I said, there's never enough money. And that was true. Now, there's never enough money is a very common money script. I, I've, I trademarked this term money operating system, just like your computer has an operating system. Uh, and, and that sort of- Is it another thing. way for that, the money blockage? Because that's what yeah. this person was talking about, right? Okay, yeah. all right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you have a money operating system that you came up with, you, uh, your, my, your child mind, figured out something or some adult said something to you about money. Money doesn't grow on trees. You have to work hard for money. Money is the root of all evil, whatever it is. Right. right? And, and your, you know, your individual listeners, it'll be different because not everyone has the same money operating system. And then you go around in the world and you prove that money operating system true. So for me, I was working in Silicon Valley in the year, you know, as a, as a high tech recruiter, I was in financial planning, I was in real estate. So I was making money. I actually had six figures of income. So how you manifest, there's never enough money when you have six figures of income is you spend six and a half. <laughs> so I had, you know, there was one year, I think I measured it. I had $120,000 in income and I spent 150. <laughs> and, and that's the way it's going to be. And I attended wow. this talk at a financial planner wow. conference, this woman mm-hmm. who is now a, a personal friend of mine. And, and it was the first time I had heard anyone talk about money blocks or money psychology. And she said, she yeah. used the term overspender. And I had never heard that term before, yeah. but I knew when I heard it that I was one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And the other way, the other way you can manifest there's never enough money is by being an under earner. And, and so there are some of you listening right. for whom you just can't seem to earn what you know you're worth in the marketplace. Yeah. So they, they, they actually sabotage it. They yep. pick the jobs that are under earning just, okay. They yeah. under promote okay. themselves. They don't right. ask for raises. They get right. contract gigs and spend six months unemployed, you know, whatever that is for you. And it seems like a pattern you can't seem to get out of. And now hopefully you're starting to have some insights like, oh, okay, I'm actually being guided by this money script that I don't want to be true. Yet my, my psychology continues to manifest it time and again. So make a long story short, I put what I learned into you, into, into practice. I paid off all the debt. I got really honest and transparent about where I was financially. I actually lived in my mother's guest room, thank God for mothers, uh, for a while to make it happen. I lost that condo, and, but I paid off the debt. And, um, and I, started really be, I started really putting my money where my mouth was in terms of building my business. I now run a registered investment advisory firm. We are all women owned and operated. My business earns about, yeah, it's something I'm very proud of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
uh, my business earns about a million dollars a year, my husband and I, and I just share the numbers, right? Because I, I want to normalize people at, uh, talking about money. Uh, right. My husband and I have a house in Silicon Valley that's worth $2 million. And then if you put wow. together all of our other investments, we're definitely what you would call financially independent. So we're not making decisions anymore because of money, right? It's, it's something that we have money work for us, but it's right. a skill set that I didn't always have. And so I... I have found my purpose on the planet is to coach people, especially entrepreneurs, because people who run businesses, you know, the sky's the limit for you uh, right. to remove these money blocks wherever they may be. So that's the long and the short of it. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's an incredible story. And it's, an, and it's a story that um, I think that in order for you to make an impact in the world, in any endeavor, you have to go through some kind of pain. And your pain was that you just mentioned going to the gas station and not being able to put gas in your car. If you, you know, Lisa Nichols is coming to my head right now. She's a speaker that talks about her story about how, you know, she had a son and she couldn't put pampers on him. You know, everybody comes to a pain threshold where they make a change. They either go down that fork in the road where they lay down and die or they do something about it. So, so you did something about it. Um, so I want to have two questions here. But the first question I want to ask you is, how did you change your money mindset? Did you go to a psychologist? Did you just recognize um, what the failure point was and did it on your own? Or how did you change? Yeah. So for myself, I, I, uh, let's see the, 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 the nut, the net of it is that I did it for myself. I figured it out. Uh, and okay. right. I was, but I, I sort of put myself in money boot camp, like between you and me and all the people listening, I didn't okay. buy a cup of coffee in a coffee shop for two years, for two years. <laughs> okay. All right. So I was in boot camp and okay. I was, and then of course you moved in with your mom. So that was yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Embarrassing. Mm -hmm. try, try dating when you're 30 years old and you live with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and, and, and what I've learned is that if you engage the psychology of your money at the same time as you impact the logistics of your money, this actually accelerates the transformation process. So uh, at, standing on the other side of the transformation, looking back, I was able to create a model and a system so that what I did is repeatable for other people. So I've coached okay. people on this. Right. Right. And I think the linchpin is because people don't realize that insights are sort of useless. Like having an insight about yourself, if you don't ever say new things or do new things because of it, it just right. disappears. It's like useful information, but it never has an impact. So you need That's an environment. They say that everybody has knowledge, but knowledge doesn't become power unless you use that knowledge. That's so exactly yeah, right. you could have made that insight, but you weren't, will, weren't willing to do the work. So you yeah. were willing to do the work and that's why you changed. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. I got very conscious about what I was saying about money. I mean, just as an example, I myself and anyone I coach, we, the first thing we do is say, you are no longer allowed to say, I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. That those words are not allowed to come out of your mouth. You either yeah. say, oh, great. Let me see how I can work that out. Or yeah. mm, I, I don't value that. And I'm not going to put it in my spending plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. right. You, it's empowered exactly. language it's about powerful. money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it's very powerful. Um, so let's talk about the money mindset block right now um, before we, we talk about your steps. Um, and, and, and the reason that I, um, that, that resonated with me is because, um, you know, my audience might be, you know, a lot of times there are people um, uh, that came from the poverty. Um, sure. You know, situation. And, and we as a people, um, African American people, are are predisposed to overspending. <laughs> so you know, we we want the nice things, and we want you know the designer shoes, or you know, you you look at somebody, and I you know I was talking to this guy one day, and he was wearing these nice running shoes, and um, he said they were Kanye West shoes, or four hundred dollars, and I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, you know, the, the, the mindset that you need to spend all this money, sometimes you don't have it on nice things and all that. So 
um, as a coach, did you, I know you made the connection between um, uh, your mother saying there's not enough money for that. Um, uh, like this coach that I was listening to was talking about all the ones that you just said, money doesn't grow in trees, money's the root of all evil. And um, somehow that gets cemented in, in our minds to create a blockage. So can we expand on that a little bit? What exactly is a money mindset block and, um, and how does that um, show itself for somebody that's looking at their spouse and saying maybe this, they have a money mindset block? That's how do we problem. recognize it? Right? Sure, sure. So first of all, take the idea of the money operating system and the money, the, the MOS is the lead duck. So for me, it was, there's never enough money. And so all my money blocks are going to be a function of or, or harmonize with that particular lead money block. Okay. okay. So mm-hmm. for example, uh, let me just say, and each individual is different, right? I don't mean yeah. to answer questions for someone who isn't even here, but let's take the example of the person who spent $400 on Kanye West shoes and maybe can't pay rent. Right. Right. So there's an imbalance there. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you ask that person on the surface, oh, well, uh, he might say, I need to have these to be socially accepted. I need to have these so that people think I'm wealthy. I need to have these so that people think I'm powerful. And then you sort of ask the question, okay, well, you have them. So do people think that about you? Have you achieved this goal? Is that desire fulfilled for you? And if you really look, it's probably not because he needs another pair of shoes and another bag and another brand name. It's an unfillable hole, right? Mm -hmm. And if you can reposition in your mind, like if you're really tired of your money going the way that it's going, if you're sort of fed up and a little bit disgusted with the fact that, you know, you're a smart, capable, educated, well-intentioned person and money isn't working for you in your life, if you can reposition that desire to spend $400 on shoes in order to get social approval as the destructive behavior that is the linchpin be- between you and what you want with money, it, it, you can actually alter the experience of spending money. So I used to get high. I mean, spending money. I, I loved it. it. It like retail therapy is a thing, right? <laughs> and, and when I would send money to my savings account to Charles Schwab, I actually felt really disappointed. My mind would measure all the things I couldn't do and things I couldn't buy because I had sent a thousand dollars to my retirement savings, right? That was how it used to be for me. Now it's the complete opposite. Now Mm -hmm. I absolutely, I get excited about spending money. I'm like, oh, wow, there's $10,000 coming in. Great. How much can I send to Chuck Schwab? (laughs) Right? Because that money is my safety. That's my freedom. And and so it's a, it's the process of, of, of shifting the positioning of that spending. And yeah, like, you know, in the beginning, I mean, there were, I didn't buy money clothes for a couple of years, but I mean, I can now, but I've earned that right. Right. Right, right, I, right. I, so there's a, well, you're no a, longer an addict. So even if you buy it, yeah. it's because, you know, you don't have to, you just want to kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like, Oh, well, I can okay. buy that or I can send it to Chuck Schwab. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's a good explanation. I, I love that. I love that. Um, so yeah. Um, really, uh, I mean, I think I look at that and I've heard a statistic that, you know, African-American women, I just heard it last week. I, rem- I wish I had written down the details, but mm-hmm. s- tend to spend something like 25% of disposable income on brand name bags. It's true. Right. And so it's the and same shoes. thing. Right. And shoes. Yeah. And it's shoes. the same thing. Yes. If you can yeah. actually start to see that desire to spend that money, which is imbalanced given what you have currently, uh, as the the destructive habit that is keeping you broke or poor or without choices, um, then you can really alter behavior. Yeah, yeah. But I like what you said though. You 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 know, as a coach, you know, we all break things down, and you you listed the top ones why people do things like that. You you listed them all. You know, make me more acceptable, uh, more socially acceptable. The fact that somebody might think you're wealthy. I mean, there's a time I heard the word profiling where, you know, people would buy these, you know, these, these clothes and shoes and cars and whatever, because they were profiling. That was a word that was used, but yeah. um, But a lot of them wouldn't do what you said, unless they're in a coaching situation or maybe a spouse is telling them, they're saying, well, is it worth it? Is being broke worth being, you know, a socially acceptable thing? So 
you took years into consideration, know that you were better than that because you had an education. You started off by saying that you um, have a degree in economics. So you know better, right? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> this is not an arithmetic problem. <laughs> right, you know better. So that's great. So this is probably a perfect segue for us to talk about. Um, you have seven steps to wealth. So is, is that how you coach someone that maybe have an, a, an overspending problem or they have a money mindset block problem or their money operating system is not working properly? Is, is that the steps that you start on to have them recognize um, uh, the problem and fix it? I do. And, you know, and I've watched some of your videos, Myrna, so I know that you're a good coach as well. And Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. it goes without saying that all effective coaching starts with permission, right? So right. A, a person who's being coached, it's a very sacred relationship, coach and mm -hmm. the participant being coached. And so, you know, that person, first of all, has to be open to change and has to have goals and right. has to have a place that they want to get that they're not there now. So that really is what, that's the drawbridge that has to come down first. And then, you know, as I came out of my own financial rock bottom, I looked back and I said, my gosh, if I can make this consumable, if I can make this easy to understand, I can teach it and I can give it away. And I felt like that was a gift that was given to me by my pain and struggle. Yeah. And so it's a very simple framework. And of course the framework won't make any difference if you don't take action on it, but well, let's go over it high level. Does that sound good? Right. So sure. The, the first step is to decide. Really, you have to make that decision that you're ready for change because in the beginning, there's no denying that you're giving up the Kanye shoes and the brand name bags and the, there are creature comforts. A lot of people who make financial transformation find that they have to move. They actually need a lower cost place to live. They need to give up the beautiful leased car so they can pay cash for a car so they don't have monthly payments. You know, like it, almost invariably, you are lowering your standard of living in the beginning and that takes courage. It takes willingness to sacrifice. So after you've made a decision, then we catalog your vocabulary about money. This is really important. So unfortunately, we live in a society where money is a private subject. That's our culture about it. And I'm sort of up for uh, just turning that culture on its ear. That's why I share with you some of my numbers, because I just want to normalize that. And I think we should talk about it. After all, we talk yeah. about everything else, right? <laughs> True. I heard them say that, that we talk about everything else, but no one ever wants to talk about money. Yeah. yeah. So I'm glad that you... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that way you can find out what your friend's doing, what's working, what's not working. You can provide advice or ask for advice if you want it. So we catalog, what do you say to yourself about money? Uh, maybe some people think in pictures about money, or maybe it's just an emotion. You think about spun, spending money and you get excited. You think about saving money and you get sad, whatever that is. That's all, that's all part of it, right? So I have my participants that I coach actually spend a month doing a money conversation log. What do you say to your partner about money? What, how do you say to your customers about money? You know, for example, uh, if you're a real estate agent and someone wants to pay you a 4% commission instead of a 6% commission, what do you say? What are the actual words? words that come, that come out of your, out your mouth, mouth. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right? That's important. Mm -hmm. Or if you're, if you're a person who negotiates on a regular basis, how does that go for you? And so let's get specific about what you say about money. And now we've got a map. We've actually got kind of your money blocks in black and white in front of us. And now right. we can really start the coaching. Okay. So we have, we've sort of highlighted, we've figured out, we're doing private detective work and figuring out what are your actual money blocks. I'll give you an example. Someone I coached found that uh, counterintuitively, she felt rich when checks would get mailed to her. So she would <laughs> put the checks on her desk and not send them to the bank. Okay. Oh, wow. Isn't that strange? And she had wow, never I can't even before. identify that block. <laughs> <laughs> that is like a serious money scarcity thing. Like, hello, yeah. someone sent you a check and you didn't send it to the bank. Yeah. Right? And Did she not know it's only paper unless you get the money? <laughs> No, but it was completely just something she was blind to until we did the money conversation log and she saw it. She saw it for what it was. And she's like, oh my God, this is crazy behavior, but no one's ever asked me about my money behavior. So I never thought about it. Wow. Right. Okay. So that's the second step is speak. Mm -hmm. And then you have plan. Now we're going to get into the logistics of money. I think that 
Uh, I don't teach budgets. I think budgets are overwhelming and too detailed for most people. I think that people spend a lot of the time de designing a budget and that they never honor it or live by it because it's too detailed, right? You can't, you can't categorize every single expenditure you have. You're a busy yeah. person with lots of responsibilities, right? Yeah. So instead I teach a system I call automation. It's sort of like the equivalent of irrigation in your garden. Little hoses bring money to the places where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And by paying That's brilliant. Yourself it is. It's people love it. People love it. And and so, you know, the linchpin of this is having one spending account, but you pay yourself first. You pay your overhead, you save for your short-term goals, maybe your next car, you save for your financial independence first. And then what's left over you spend. So you spend from one account. And that way when that account gets to zero, you're not at zero. Your money goals are already okay. funded. Okay. So that's plan. And honestly, most people never get through plan because it's very Front loaded. It is a lot of work in the beginning, but once you right. set it up, just like irrigation, it happens every time you ho turn the hose on, right? right. So nice. Then we have earn. Obviously, you have to earn money. There are lots of business coaches who focus just on this step. And so people pay a lot of money to figure out how to earn money and they can't figure out why their money still doesn't work for them. And it's because they don't have these other six steps. Okay, so inside the step of earn, obviously you have negotiations, you have positioning yourself with your LinkedIn presence or how you, how you interview or ask for jobs or how you run your business. I mean, this is a, you could write, you could spend three years on this step, but it's in there. And then once you're earning money, the, the, the uh, next step, the fourth step is ask. Is that the fourth? No, five. We're at five now. We're right. at five. Thank you. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's ask and ask is big. So ask is a mindset. Ask is something I ask the people I coach to instill in their lives forever. You want your financial life to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger every month and every year. And that means who are they asking? Yeah. You can ask for, you can ask for a million things. You can ask your credit cards for a lower interest rate. You can oh, ask okay. your insurance for a lower premium. You okay. can ask your memberships for a discount. You can ask for, I, one of the things I have my people do is just go ask for a discount at Starbucks. Just go ask. <laughs> it, the, the point is not whether you get the discount or not. It's being someone who asks. And we have a culture about not right. haggling. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I don't, I don't, I don't know that haggling is going to transform your financial life, but you want to be someone who has the courage to do it if it's the appropriate yeah. time to do that. Um, yeah. You can ask in your business for a business partner. You can ask for you know, someone to come work for you. If you, by the way, if you're running a business, you're the VP of sales until you hire a VP of sales, right? So you want someone in charge of business development. You all, and that's always a very uncomfortable thing. I mean, a lot of people can't ask, they can't, they can't ask. So it's, that's probably a tough one. Don't you find? Uh, so we do a, we do a challenge inside my coaching program called get a hundred no's. So you win the game by getting a hundred no's. And my assertion is your, I will change your life. You're building you strength. Building strength. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So it's about making powerful requests. Okay. Yeah. And then obviously uh, you. I'll tell you which, which those would be good for salespeople that fear rejection. So once you get past the, the no thing, then you'll keep asking and they will definitely succeed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And there's, you know, you can see, you probably knew several kids in your childhood who they were the ones who not only had a paper delivery route, but they employed a bunch of kids who have paper delivery routes underneath them. Those are entrepreneurs yeah, in the making, bold. right? Yes, yes. Bold. Yep, they yep, have yep. the natural <laughs> skill, but you can develop that skill too. Yeah. Okay. And then there's invest. So, invest. you know, if you have your money sitting on the sidelines in cash, or if you're afraid of the markets, unfortunately you are giving up compound returns and yeah. that's exponential growth. You've got to be investing for your future. There are evidence-based ways to do that. Very low cost, very, very smart ways uh, to invest. If you just take the time to learn about it, I do teach about that and then obviously protect. So you need to have the right insurances and systems set up around your money so that it doesn't go away. You, you and I all, everyone listening ha knows someone who has built up a fortune and lost it. And it's because yeah. they didn't put the right protections in place. And this can be wow. 
everything from an umbrella policy to renter's insurance, life insurance, disability policies, but there's also the, the mindset of protection. So checking in on your transactions every day, looking at what's happening in your bank account and credit cards to make sure you're not the victim of fraud. You know, those are just some examples of how you build a moat around yeah. it. Most of the people that you talk that, that you know, the, um, you know, the influencers that talk about losing money, um, it's usually someone stole it from them or they weren't checking it. Like you said, they have an accountant that, that they gave total access and then they didn't check on it. Or, you know, it's, it's rarely the market falling out, uh, the bottom out that they lost it. It's usually, you're right, they weren't protecting it. So, yeah. wow, that, you- those were some good steps. You know, and and it's the, it's the taking of the steps that will change your life. And so knowing about it, isn't going to make a difference. It's actually doing it. And so that's why in my programs, we teach the step at the beginning of the month. And then we give you all month to do it because it takes time. Like imagine how long it would take to get a hundred no's, but how much fun you would have if you were doing it. And it felt like a game to you. (laughs) Yeah. You know, all these, all your steps are life changing. All your stuff is life changing. Let me repeat it for anyone that's missed it. So decide that you're ready for change. You know, I speak to a lot of coaches on this show. Um, and most of them say, you know, when they when somebody comes into the coaching conversation, they have to be ready, right? Else you're wasting time. You know, um, if you're not willing to do the work, you've got to be ready. So you decide that you're ready for change. Catalog your vocabulary. What are you telling yourself? And as a life coach, I know that a lot of people do not do not live in clarity so you might say that i'm even me sitting here thinking okay you know what are what are what is my vocabulary i have to go and actually go into meditation in order to figure out what is my vocabulary so i know that it's you know a lot of time people can't do this on their own that's why they need coaches right um automation now that's a difficult one so i'm just going to skip by that but but that is where you you turn the sprinklers on and you automate it. So <laughs> imagine money figuratively flowing to all of your goals every month. It's magic. It's I know, magic. right. But you're going to have to teach them that. So yeah, I, I, I wasn't able to grasp that. <clears throat> so of course, <laughs> so earn money. Yes. Um, I, I love that step, you know, earn money, you know, get a promotion. Um, you know, start a business on the side or something, you know, earn money. Acts, that's a powerful one because I know that a lot of people fear rejection. They don't even want to ask a girl out or a guy out or ask for a raise or, you know, um, uh, just ask for the sale. That's one of the, <laughs> the fundamental things. I'm, you know, I, I used to be a salesperson before I became a coach. And I will tell you that most people don't ask for the sale. <laughs> And because they're afraid of saying no and then invest and protect or last two. So those are, those are, those are great. Um, so, um, so let's transition into the entrepreneurs um, that you mentioned in the beginning that you love working with entrepreneurs because there's no limit to what an entrepreneur can earn. And that's one of the things that I, one of the reasons I became a salesperson because they're saying what I loved about being a salesperson is because there's no limit to what you can earn, right? right. Um, I hate going to the jobs where you know you're going to get $500 a week. <laughs> and there is no, either, you know, it's, I, 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 yeah, I've always been in the industry where the possibilities, that excites me. So yeah, let's talk about how, um, how does money blocks or the money language, as you're calling it, um, and these seven steps um, help entrepreneurs differently from maybe, you know, somebody that's that's working, you know, for yeah. a paycheck. Well, let me give you an example from some of the folks that I've coached. And I'll just say, if you are a sole proprietor or own a small business, your money in the business is almost literally your money mindset, including all of your current upper limit, upper limit problems and money blocks. It's like you took all of that and just splat it on the wall. And that's your business because that's all you know how to create. That's your language created your business, your negotiations, your requests, your offers, Oh, that's your business. Okay. So 
if your financial life isn't working exactly the way that you want it to, if you're working so hard for the money and not having much to show for it, it's okay because we can alter that. So uh, I'll give you an example, and I don't use their real names, obviously, but obviously, the, right. mm -hmm. the, the numbers I share with you are verified by my team and the client. So we meet and agree on the changes that we've made together. So uh, let's give you the example of Danica. Danica came into my program. She was on track to uh, earn $400,000 as a real estate agent. It's a lot of money, but she was also on track to spend four hundred and fifty. dollars <laughs> so she had IRS debt, she had credit card debt, she had a leased vehicle, she was ha she had high rent, and she was paying for her kids to go to UCLA out of cash flow. So mm -hmm. what what Danica saw and what we saw together is that she had extremely disempowered language and context for herself in the world about money. She was living as the victim of a divorce that had happened 15 years prior. So she uh, you know, make a long story short, she and her her husband discovered or found that they were sort of uh, in the financial world with no shorts on. So they were they had a lot of money coming in, but too much going out, no savings. And when the income dried up in the financial crisis, they found themselves just overwhelmed with debt and obligation. So she was very resentful about this. And what she had done is she had taken on responsibility for the three kids and she had found three living situations in Silicon Valley. So imagine she has a 16 year old son. They are living in the in-law unit on the property of some wealthy friends. And the 16 year old son is going to high school with the 16 year old boy who's living in the house. And he's right. the quarterback of the football team. Right. So my client, Danica, is left with that it's her fault that her kids must have these massive psychological scars. Right. Mm. That she owes them because they were essentially homeless for their whole high school years, junior high and high school. Mm. They I mean, they lived for free <clears throat> with friends. So and she's got so guilt. Right. Mm -hmm. She was going to spend her life making up for it. Right. right. And so, and so what we, what she saw and what she finally admitted to herself was that she was creating a vicious cycle that as much as she was giving them more money than she could afford to give them, she also wasn't taking care of herself, that she was creating a situation where the minute she stopped spending, earning money, she was going to be in trouble and they were going to have to take care of her, therefore perpetuating the cycle, right? Well, she's also a real estate agent, so there's no guarantees. Exactly. Exactly. She doesn't have any base. Right. No, right. Exactly. And, and right. so she got okay with she, what she saw was, and this is a major thinking shift that a lot of people, especially women, I think have to make is that you are the only one who's going to bulletproof your financial situation. No one else cares more about your money than you. No one's going to take care of you. Probably, probably not. Right. Maybe a few lucky few, uh, <laughs> but it, it was her Danica's job to take care of Danica financially, to set herself up with cash surrounding her and savings in the future. And so she took on that responsibility. She went to her kids and she said, um, she said, I, I've been making up for the wrongs of the past. And they said, mom, we don't expect this. You did a great job. They, like, they're like, we love you. And she went to, you know, everyone in the real estate community knew about her divorce. And so everyone felt like she was someone who needed to be taken care of. And I said, Danica, as long as you are the Phoenix rising, you have never risen. You will never be risen. You will always be this victim who people feel sorry for. And do, does a victim that people feel sorry for have financial independence? No, they don't. No, they don't. And she saw that her narrative about herself was costing her the financial life that she wanted. So now everyone who's listening won't necessarily relate to this kind of high drama situation, but I think you can take what you're hearing about Danica and personalize it for yourself. She went to her friends and colleagues and said, okay, I'm no longer that person. Thank you for caring about me. Thank you for taking care of me, but I am now going to right size my financial life and I will, I will succeed. Like I intend to produce financial independence. And she said almost the minute she started having these conversations, she did it with her, her sales manager and two of her best friends. She said, that week, five <clears throat> listings came in, right? Nice. So she, every year since I've worked with her, she's made over $900,000 a year 
Okay. She's increasing her net worth by $300,000 a year. And I know those numbers sound insane to people who aren't in Silicon Valley, but you have to understand how expensive houses are here. Right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and now yeah. when I see Danica, she says she keeps hundred dollar bills in her glove compartment and uh, like it's stuffed in her purse. She says, Hillary, I surround myself with cash. Yeah. She said, I'm yeah. a money yeah. magnet, right? Yeah. She's yeah. So conscious about the things <clears throat> she says about herself and money. Yeah. And she's, com she's a completely different person, right? So e for each person where we go to work on your money blocks is going to be different. For some, you'll find that your money blocks are uh, operationally systematized in your business processes. So you're either undercharging for your products or services, or you're not spending enough effort getting prospects into the funnel or whatever it is. There's some mm -hmm. part of the process that's broken for you. Right. Okay. So that's where we go to work. Does that answer your question, Myrna? <laughs> yeah, that is, that is great. Well, you, you answered a question actually in, in, in like your first sentence oh. when you said that. <laughs> well, I talked a long time for nothing then. <laughs> well, you, then you just explained it, but you said, but it's, it's very true. You know, one of my most famous sayings as a coach is, and not even for your business for, you know, you can, if you, you can have a business where you're an entrepreneur and you have a business but we're still the CEOs of our own life. And one of the things that I always say to people is that you are the lid, your personal growth, what you think, you know, how you go about your life, you are the lid. So basically what you just said in a broader way is that our mindsets um, is the lid for a business. If you don't think expansion, if you, um, you know, are afraid to ask for the sale, if you don't, you know, whatever, it's, it's all you, unless you hire somebody that is right. different, but yeah. So I understand what, and, and, and using real estate is, is um, it was a good one because you, you're not looking at, you know, a corporation that has a thousand employees or something. You're looking at a, exactly. you know, an entrepreneur that is, you know, working for herself. Um, so that was a, that was a good, um, you know, that was a good explanation to understand how, um, our money blocks affects um, entrepreneurs because yeah, I mean this person was making a hundred thousand a check. You know, she went from four four hundred to nine hundred thousand because, and she can go to two million. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no limit on what she can do. So that's one of the reasons I love um, uh, entrepreneurship and sales because there's no limit. So as we as we try to wrap up. Um, can you tell our listeners about, I mentioned, I know before we recorded, you mentioned that you have a training, a, a, a training class or a webinar or something happening on October the 8th. You want to tell our listeners about that, um, what I you're do. offering and um, how they can um, get in touch with you for um, any kind of your coaching programs. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much. And the training is called eight ways business owners can transform revenue into personal wealth. And it is an on-demand training. So it's not just October 8th, but it is being taken down. So it's no longer available after October 15th. So you definitely want to go That's grab sweet. it, right. grab mm -hmm. your link. It really is for entrepreneurs who, you know, and I said this before, but who are really just sick and tired of working so hard for the money and having not much to show for it. So I just, I want to show you how to climb out of that trap. And in this training, and it's totally free, I'll share how you can stop making the three most common money mistakes, uh, including the ones that led you to have financial uncertainty during the coronavirus pandemic. So this is current, okay? So we're going to yeah, talk about yeah. the things that have business owners be buoyed in economic downturns. Um, so, you know, really, let's have this be the last economic event that takes you out financially. I'll also show you the three habits of successful business owners. So I've literally coached hundreds of business owners, and I know the difference between habits that work and habits that don't. So I'm giving that away for free. And then on the training together, I'm going to invite you to make the one commitment that you need to make now to transform your financial life forever. So you can grab your copy of that training by going to hillaryhendershot.com forward slash Myrna, M-Y-R-N-A. I, oh, yeah, right. We'll customize nice. it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and Hillary Hendershot, my first name has one L. And my last name has two T's, forward slash Myrna, and we'll and register to have the video training delivered right to your inbox. And then don't hesitate to watch it because it will disappear. Yeah, well, listen, anybody listening and watching us knows that you have great content. I mean, 
I'm blown away by the things that you have accomplished and um, your seven steps. So I definitely, you know, I might even take that, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I need to learn about money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go on there myself and, 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 um, and, and, and take your webinar. Um, all right. So somebody that's, that's listening um, or watching on YouTube um, might not have gotten that, that um, website properly, but this will be your incentive to head over to my website, which is the show page. On the show page, you will have a transcript of my conversation with um, Hillary, um, and you would also get the link to the webinar and her website on there. So, and that is blog.myhelps.us. A little easier than her last name. <laughs> I have to spell my name at least. I know, right? <laughs> so they can also do that. So um, we just want to, as we, as we as we wind down in the show, I just want to thank you guys all for tuning in to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life Radio Hour. Um, I love doing the show. I love talking to guests like Hillary that not only um, I learned from them, but I know that you also can learn from them. So I learned a ton of things from Hillary today, mostly the things that I don't know <laughs> about how to handle my money. Um, so I definitely will be learning from her. I will definitely um, go on to her webinar and um, also see what, um, what I can learn. I'm in constant and never ending improvement. Um, uh, that's a, that's a term that I learned all you know, be. 20 years ago and I am learning something every single day. So I am a learner. I actually love learning. So, um, uh, yeah, one of the things I don't know about a lot of is, is money. So, um, this is one way for me to, you know, add some notches to my belt here. So thank you guys all for listening want to encourage you please to subscribe to the transform your mind um youtube podcast channel definitely trying to grow our audience there um if you're if you're listening to this right now on itunes would appreciate a subscription as well as a rating and a review so that that allows us to get the show out to more um listeners to share this great content I'm trying to change your mindset all around the world. And um, one of the things that I want to do is to, uh, you know, let you guys know that how you start off in life is not where you end up. And wealth management is one of the notches of that. Learning um, not to overspend, learning how to um, improve um, by generations and um, leaving a legacy, legacy for your kids. Um, you know, so that's all part of why I do this show. So, um, I want to thank Hillary again for coming on and, um, sharing her knowledge on money, wealth, money mindset, your money operating system, and her seven steps to, um, creating and protecting your wealth. All right. Um, also want to invite you guys to join my Facebook group called Life Coach. And, um, uh, you know, it's a private group, but, you know, just send me an invite and I will, um, um, you know, approve, approve the request. Um, and it's a, it's a group that has hundreds of life coaches and we all give inspiration every day. Um, so, you know, in the middle of the week, when you're looking for some inspiration, then you head on to the life coaching group. All right, Hillary, um, I've started asking my, my guests one question at the end of the show. And so the question I have for you today is, how can our listeners transform their money mindset today? Well, I think they should check out my training. Eight ways business owners <laughs> can transform revenues into personal wealth. <laughs> it really is individualized for every person. It you do that private detective work to figure out where your money blocks are affecting you. And then you can go to work really altering your mindset. It's a, it's a fun process and a very profitable one if you do it right. Yes. All right. Well, listen. Um, thank you guys all for tuning in to the Transform Your Mind radio show and podcast. I love each and every one of you. So until next time, namaste.